You're watching EVH and Gear TV, brought to you by Stewart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stewartguitars.com. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com. Here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH artist Eric Broadbent. Hey everyone, happy Sunday. It's a dismal Sunday afternoon here, but at least here in Ontario, Canada. Happy Sunday afternoon to you and welcome to EVH Gear TV. It feels like it's been about a week since we've been live and that's probably because it has been a week. We've been plagued with uh, the most horrific internet problems ever. It's it's so sporadic that we can't even pinpoint what it is yet, but I'm working very closely with my internet service provider here over in Ontario and uh, I have a service call coming up on Thursday. And the strange thing is, it's like I say, it's very sporadic. I During the daytime, I have great, well, I have, I have the capacity that I'm paying for for my internet. I have good transmission down, great transmission up. Come evening, uh, 7 o'clock through 9, 10 o'clock in the evening, it's absolutely horrific. I have less than a half of a meg of upload. So this video that we're going to be doing today is going to be taking a look at a few things. It's uh, kind of a continuation of a video that I started last week. I was going to do a road unboxing, a, a, a package that came in from Road Mics about a week ago now. Still sitting in the box, have not had a chance to unbox it. And I did a live uh, jam one night uh, about a week ago, somewhere approximately a week ago. And uh, it was jamming on the guitar for a little bit. And then the, the tail end of that video was going to be the unboxing. We're going to talk about the microphone. Right, you know, about halfway through that transmission, that broadcast, my internet connection just cut not only in half, it was cut to almost nothing. My upload speed, I could literally watch it almost come to a screeching halt. So we had to, we had to postpone it. And that became, it just kind of became a catalyst or a domino effect of uh, hor horrific <laughs> internet connections. I had to cancel two guests. I've only had to cancel three guests in the entire three three years that I've been doing um, these, these shows. And sadly, 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 I mean, it broke my heart, but it's beyond my control, had to cancel Alex Skolnick on Friday and also had to cancel a special presentation of the Helix Hour, which normally runs right now at this time, pretty much, on Sundays uh, here. And it was with uh, Stefik McKay. He's over in Australia. So we're, we're going to have him last night at 9 o'clock Eastern, our time, which would have been about 12 o'clock his time Sunday. And the connection was still horrible. And it was so bad, you know, this is what really frustrated me, is that during the day, I did multiple speed tests yesterday, and I'd already canceled with Stevic, because I canceled with Alex on Friday, canceled with Stevic on Sunday, and then during the day, I was doing more speed tests, my, my speed was perfect. So I contacted him and said, hey, if you're still available, we can still do this. And then as the day progressed, as we wound down to that afternoon and evening hour, dropped down again to under half a meg of upload. And uh, so, needless to say, I'm working very closely with my provider uh, here, and whom I actually, I used to work for at one time, so I know all the workings of these things. I know what they can and can't do. I was a service tech for this provider. I was the guy that went to people's homes and installed cable uh, for this provider. So I know what they're capable of, and I know when they're BSing me and things like that as well, too. So long story short, we're going to try and, and get this worked out. I do have a service call here coming on Thursday, and I know when they get here, they're going to they're gonna find no fault. When I talked to the one of the techs online, they said that there was a street level problem, and that's that is one of the problems because I was a cable technician at one time. There's a lot of reasons why these cable companies don't want you to do the cable installations yourself and run all these splitters in your rooms and your houses and stuff like that. Not because they're potentially losing money, because cable is kind of a full duplex type of a system where you know the system the signal comes in to your home and also goes back out. So if you've got a very bad splitter, like a you know a cheap five dollar or dollar store splitter in your home, and you know you're running multiple splits in your home and you got bad wiring, whatever, that also goes back out and carries on down the line. So because if you're you're taking some shortcuts in your home to to get cable into other rooms of your home, it's also passing it down to the next guy. So who knows what I've got on my street? Uh, it's it's hard to say, but they're going to come out here and get this rectified. And I've told them, you know, it's I'm tired of the embarrassment of it. So. Let's jump away from all the negative and let's focus on some of the positive. Let's say hi to a bunch of people in the chat first and foremost. So fortunately, we have a connection. We have a good connection and we're going to roll with it. Everything's looking good here at my end. Uh, so we will uh, go over and say hi to everyone. Pooh Ninja is here. Quentin James is here. Terry's GG&G, my beautiful nocturnal butterfly. 
And before I go too far into the chat, I want to mention something about her channel. And actually, this has a lot to do with her channel today. This this unboxing is actually technically for her channel. Uh, it's something that she's going to be using. But she's got some really cool things going on there. She has a fun show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, usually around between the 10 and 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, time uh, here in, our, in Ontario. And she usually has her friend Leanne, who goes by Ladybug on the show. Quentin James jumps on from time to time. Terry jumps on from time to time. Uh, Scott Connor and a bunch of, you know, uh, Mark Taylor and a bunch of, you know, random guests. Sometimes there's some regulars, but they have a lot of fun. It's just kind of talking about, you know, what's in the news and just fun stuff and uh, cooking and gardening and all that kind of stuff. Her, her channel is kind of based around, I don't want to say completely around, um, you know, gardening and, and cooking, but it's going to be a lot on that. So check her channel out. I really encourage you to, to click on her name, Nocturnal Butterfly. Go check out her channel and subscribe. I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't think there was some good value for you. And maybe your wives or friends or family members might take some value in some of her content as well, too. So check it out. So there's Nocturnal Butterfly. Um... And let me see. Quentin says, now you know how Brian and I feel. I know with a, the with a slow internet. Uh, Carlos Santos says, howdy folks. Welcome back to the 21st century, Eric. Yeah, I'm only here. I'm only renting a space. I'm not here for to stay long, Carlo. I'm just uh, temporarily here. Podcast stage. Uh, says, hey, Eric, streaming right when I start editing this week's podcast. Dang it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Banju. I'm one of my, uh, a person I really greatly, greatly, greatly admire uh, in the internet thing here. Uh, new friends here, but I'm a longtime fan of his. Uh, if you got it, speaking of checking out channels, click on his channel, go check it out. He does a lot of reviews. He's a musician, but he does a lot of reviews on microphones, no holds barred. Uh, you know, he'll review everybody's microphone and gives you unbiased reviews on them. And I, I, I like that. And I don't mean to take you away from your podcast, uh, but, uh, I love your work. I really, really do. You're a great inspiration to me. And, and I want to get Banjo here from Podcast Age on the show very, very soon and just talk some tech and gear and really more so about some music stuff because I always see his gear behind him, but I don't get a chance to really uh, explore that with him. So I think we'll have some fun with that. Uh, Bobby Clipper is here. Uh, Nocturnal Butterfly says, spring showers bring May flowers, so I'll tough it out. Yeah, we're, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of dismal here today. It really is. Charles Green, how is everyone? Anki is here. Hello. Hi from Germany. Actually, it's very cold here too. Uh, it's snow. We had all, she's had snow and we had pretty much almost snow. It was a very, very, it was kind of wet snow and it turned into rain. Um, and the Quentin says video is good. Audio is good. And the mustache is coming in nicely. I'll have the mustache back by next weekend for sure. David Ennis is here. Charles Green. Let me see. Uh, Gambit. Hey man, good to see you. And I know you're a fan of podcast stage as well too. Haven't seen you in a very long time. Nice to see you. I think it what it was. I, I put the bat signal out there and I put road microphones in the title and Gambit's here. <laughs> he's he's a he's a podcaster and a YouTuber as well too. Very, very cool. Um and yeah, it seems the stream works good. We're good right now. And the sad it almost makes me want to move my shows until like an afternoon slot. Like Helix Hour Helix Hour, which is technically right now, is a prime spot. Uh internet's working great right now, but I don't want to move my EVH shows and my Kramer shows and things like that in the evening because the EVH show is 9 o'clock Eastern on Friday nights. I like to kind of warm up the weekend for you guys and girls on the weekend. I don't want to have to move that. So let's just hope that the uh, my provider gets their, their their stuff together and gets this fixed because it's it's embarrassing. It is. Scott Connors here. Talked about him and mentioned his name a moment ago. And he's jumping in. Say hello, folks. Uh, Mud Junkie, what's up, Eric? And the rest of your fine people. So I'm going to highlight where Mud Junkie jumped in. And we're going to jump into this... Uh, Rode microphone here. We've got a couple of them in the home here, but this was going to be one for um, for Nocturnal Butterfly for her podcast because right now she's you know using her iPad and um, you know typical earbuds for her microphone. She wants to take it to the next level. We've already got her the uh, Rode PSA boom arm upstairs, and um, uh, we, with that kind of stuff, we're going to get her all set up with that. So she's got the boom arm, just waiting for the microphone and stuff like that as well too. And just have to text uh, the boy here for a second. Okay. He obviously doesn't know I'm live at the moment. Okay, so hang on a second here. We're back. All right, so let's grab the microphone and crack into it. It's been sitting here for a week. And very carefully here. So this, as I say, it's for Nocturnal Butterfly. This will bring her, her audio quality up a lot. Not that it's bad now by any means. It works, right? And of course, uh, six million of those styrofoam peanuts in here, so we have to be careful with that. 
So this was something that was actually it was backward in the last the last episode that you saw. We had some stuff come in. We had the uh, Rodecaster Pro uh, mixer, the yeah, podcast uh, kind of stu- podcast in the box. We had that come in, and some of the pod mics, which you can see, one of them right here, that, one of the brand new microphones from Rode. Okay, so this was backward at the time. So here is what we have for her, the Rode NT USB microphone. I'll crack this open. I'll give you a little bit of a tour of it. And I know uh, Andrew at Podcast Stage, he's done some reviews recently on a bunch of microphones. Like, you know, there was, I think, I think it might have been uh, The Verge, I think, that put out a, a list of microphones that were their, and their recommendation, the best of the podcast mics, whatever you should have out there. And he gave his uh, opinion on it. And I know this was one of them on the list as well, too. Now, I know it didn't, maybe didn't score as favorable, but for someone basically getting into kind of starting out with, um, you know, a stream and wanting some really, really good audio. Don't want to have to worry about, you know, like a, a mixer because, you know, there can be some expenses, uh, you know, involved in getting a podcast going. If you want to use an XLR microphone like I'm using over here or you know, like a typical microphone you would sing through with a band that's an XLR microphone, you need some type of a mixer. And at bare minimum, you're probably looking at, you know, if you buy like a little Behringer or something, you know, you're probably looking at 80 bucks, 90 bucks, 100 bucks to kind of, let's just say 100 bucks as an argument point. Then you need microphone cords, you need a mic stand, you need all that kind of stuff. So you want to keep things kind of simple but still have audio quality. A USB microphone is a good choice. And if you go look back on some of my videos, trust me, I don't want to look back at my old videos, but you're welcome to look back at them. I started off way back in the day with, uh, <laughs> it's 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 embarrassing, but it was a good microphone at the time. I can't say anything bad about it. It was the, um, the uh, Blue Yeti. Right, it was a thing that looked like a giant suppository, um, and you see so many people using those microphones wrong. They're talking into the top of it, like you'd speak into this microphone here. It's a side address microphone, uh, just like what this microphone is, and just like what this uh, NT USB is going to be here as well too. But it served its purpose. I graduated up to uh, what a lot of people were using at the time was the uh, Audio Technica AT 2020, which was an XLR. They also make a, um, a USB version as well too. But there's many cool things I think I like about this NT USB. So first of all, let's crack it open. So this is yours, Nocturnal Butterfly. I know she's getting excited about it. First of all, one thing I really, really enjoy about all of Rode's packaging, it's kind of an experience opening up their products. Now, yes, yes, Rode is a sponsor of the show, but I'm giving you my honest opinion here, the fact that I like I like marketing stuff. I'm, I'm a marketing person myself. I specialize in marketing. I've been working in marketing and social media now for, for quite a few years. And impression is everything. And I've said this in some of my videos I've done with Road. Sure, you can take a pretty thing and stick it in a pretty box and stick something junk in a pretty box and, and try to pass it off as good. But Road does both. They, they have a, a fantastic packaging and their product speaks volumes. So here we go. Here's the packaging itself. I mean, first impressions. I'll get rid of the, some of this black foam. I mean, this could just be stuck like an OEM box in a plastic bag and you're done. Uh, but they, they go the extra mile. So it comes with a desk stand, which we won't use. We've got a couple of these here. We don't we don't use these, but they're nice if you want to use them. Maybe you're at a hotel, right? Uh, at a convention, like our good friend Brian Cote. He uh, just went and attended NAB recently. Uh, another one of my uh, people I really greatly admire on YouTube is Curtis Judd. I'm sure Podcast Age will recognize his name. Uh, he just did some stuff from NAB. So if you're at a hotel room and you need a mic stand, you don't have one of these things like I have here or a traditional mic stand, this would work great to put it on your coffee table or whatever you have in front of you. All right, and then of course you have the microphone itself. This is nice. It comes with a metal pop sh- uh, pop filter. Okay, there's a piece of foam under it just for safety and transportation. I'll put it off to the side. All right, now I'm going to take off the, the filter just to show you, but it's a very attractive looking microphone. Okay, all right. And your podcast stage, the most important thing is the content, for sure, for sure. Uh, let's see if I missed anything else as we're going here. And I, I honestly, I feel like the pressure's on me right now too because with someone like podcast stage watching a live stream, First of all, I'm honored and I'm, well, I'm not gonna say I'm nervous. I, this is not my first microphone rodeo, but he is, he is the, he is one of the, he's like the Eddie Van Halen of microphone reviews. So there you go. And I know that's going to make him blush a little bit, but okay. So it comes with the, uh, the pop filter as well too, which will take a lot of the, you know, the plosives away. And if you're, if you're someone who is maybe a little inexperienced on a microphone, which you probably would be, if you're starting off with one of these, you you haven't really worked in studios and things like that. And, you know, a lot of us, including myself, have not had formal training on a microphone. How to, you know, even just because we're musicians doesn't mean that we have experience in doing voiceovers and recording. And we don't know exactly where to approach the microphone, from what angle, how to speak, how to breathe, all that kind of stuff. 
this will kind of certainly uh, assist you to get past some of those, you know, uh, embarrassing things that can happen with, with your voice, right? So that we'll cover that. Here's the microphone itself. Very nice mic. Now, the cool thing, there's going to be many, many, uh, many cool things I'm going to mention about this microphone. Number one is now when you plug this in to whether you're either your uh, Mac or your PC, it now becomes an audio source. Now, I know myself, I don't plug headphones into my Mac as it is. I use my mixer. If I want to listen to music, I either listen to my reference monitors, which, which are invisible to you right now, but are left and right above my screens. And I've got my uh, Personas mixer off to the left. I plug my headphones, actually not even into that, because in front of me, I have another product, which is made by Rhodes' sister company, Aphex. I have what's called the HeadPod. It's a four-channel headphone amplifier. So technically, if I want to plug in headphones, I plug them in uh, to the HeadPod, which is down on my desk in front of me. And that's how I listen to audio if I'm listening to headphones. And when you watch my live streams when I'm uh, interviewing guests, I have uh, typically right now, actually, I'm just using... You know, you can see them here, the uh, uh, Apple earbuds, and I just run one in one ear and I hide them in my shirt so you can't see the cables and so it's not a distraction. But let's take all that stuff away. Let's say the average person is at home and they want to plug in headphones and whether it's a Mac or sometimes on your computer, you have to reach way behind and you're fiddling for it, trying to find the spot to find the cable for the spot for your headphone jack. With this becoming, turn it this way, with this becoming now your audio source, it has a headphone jack right on it right there, Okay. Also has a volume to control between how much of the micro, how much of the the microphone you want to hear, and how much of the computer you want to hear. And then you also have a gain stage as well too. And it, it's quite gainy. There's a lot of gain on this. So let's just say we had this on a stand in front of us. Okay, now I'd be speaking into it like this. Okay, well actually technically, Rode is always really smart. They put the little gold dot. I'll try to show you right there. That's where you speak into. This is a front, a side address microphone like this. You're not speaking into it like this, even though it looks like it. If you see someone talking like this, they're doing it wrong. All right, so it's a side address microphone. All right, so you, and they also let you know. And sometimes when I used to have the windsock on this microphone here, this one is a, is a top address microphone. I would have to actually look to see. Well, it doesn't really matter too much, but I want it, especially with the NT1. You want to find out where you're speaking. I'll pull off the sock on this one for a second. See, there you go. You see the gold dot, which is probably hard to see right there. And you also see the road logo, so you know where you're speaking. So you want to be speaking there, okay? But the fact is now this becomes your audio source and very, very easy to control your volume. You want to listen to music, you can crank up the volume. So very, very nice. It weighs, I don't know, the uh, half a pound at least. It's a big, solid steel chassis, nothing plastic about it. Uh, I, I greatly, greatly uh, like everything about this microphone. And this would be something here as well, too, that because we have a couple spare, um, this would be something I would take on the road with me as well. And I use the word road loosely, not the same word road, but when we're mobile and we're at a hotel room or NAM or something like that, this would be great to plug into the PC and use it. You can also use it with your iOS devices like your uh, iPads and you know your phones and things like that. You have to use the additional camera kit, which I don't own to this day. I've never had any real need to it for it. But if you get like the camera connection kit, uh, you can actually hook that up to your, your iPad and that as well too. And this becomes a fantastic um, a microphone for your iOS devices. And I see there's something coming up here. One second. Um, let's jump back. There's a few, there's a few questions here. Let's control, continue down the road here. I'm saying road <laughs> too much podcast age unboxing. Yes. Can't wait to see what you got. All right. So well, I'm a little late on the chat. Quentin James says score. Uh, Mud Junk, I'm trying to figure out why I'm signed in with my old account. I'm using signed in as, okay, there you go. You might have to click on accounts and then you can switch accounts. Let me see here. Nocturnal Butterfly says Road Rocks. And we are a road family through and through here. That's one of the things I, I want to say too. Um, since, since the YouTube channel, you know, over the past probably year or so, um, the channel's been growing a little bit and I've been reached, I've been approached by m multiple of these um, overseas uh well, actually, no, I'll tell you about it in a second. I'll tell you about what's, what's also in the box here in a second. Multiple of these kind of Chinese manufacturers that have all these competing products and asking me to do reviews on, on microphones, and I've politely declined them all. Sometimes, a couple of these people, a couple times, I'm saying, I'm sorry, I have um, a good working relationship with, with Rode, and I don't want to jeopardize that. And even though Rode has not ever signed me to any kind of an exclusive, they've never said, I can't do this, we'd rather you not do this, we'd rather you not talk about that. Um, 
you know, I just, just something in my heart I felt very, very passionate about. I love the product. It's become a part of my signature sound here. And people like uh, Bandrew from Podcast Stage, he does a great, great thing by reviewing everybody. No holds barred. He doesn't have a real commitment to anybody. He'll say Sennheiser is better for this, Rhodes better for this, uh, Norman's better for this, blah, 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 you know, like everywhere in between. So there's great people like him and other people out there that do these multiple reviews of different products and will give you the pros and cons of all of them. I just don't have enough time to, to, you know, do shootouts, that kind of thing anymore. I just, I really just don't. And uh, I leave it to the people that can do that the best. He's one of them for sure. There's other people out there too that do the shootout videos, whether they're guitars or amplifiers or, you know, like a Marshall versus versus uh, an EVH or, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, the pros and cons. I just kind of focus on one particular thing I know a little bit about and I'll, and I'll, I'll stay on that because I don't know a lot about everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I focus on that. Um, but there's a question that came up a second ago. Um, let me see here. So what, what is it? Uh, question from Gambit. Let me see if I can find it. I'm coming up to it for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is a really, um, really good po uh, point from podcast H. If you film anything, you need to be subscribed to Curtis Judd. He's an absolute legend. He is. And he, he is, he, along with a couple other people, um, have really influenced me when it comes to doing reviews for actually physically purchasing. Now, I've, I know I've had people saying they've bought different EVH guitars and they've bought Helix products and things like that on my recommendations, and I'm very grateful for that. But I, too, am like you. I've bought multiple products on reviews from people out there. Curtis Judd, he, he made me purchase... Uh, my field recorder, which I, I use quite often. I use it at NAMM. Uh, it's a Tascam DR60 Mark II. It's a small box about like this big. It's kind of geared for DSLR users, camera users. It goes on underneath your camera on top of your tripod. It's a four-track recorder that you can either um, you know, record audio onto an SD card and then filter it back to your camera as a pass-through and also record on your camera or just record directly to that. Um, what I tend to do is I tend to use it directly to my camera. Like I, re I use it as basically I use it as a live mixer is what I do, and I'm still recording directly to the camera just because sometimes I don't have the time to sync up the audio uh, and the video after the fact. If I'm doing multiple um, guests, like I did when I interviewed uh, Gary Kramer at Gary Kramer's place in California, there I did use the Tascam unit as a uh, as its own recorder. So I had Gary's uh, uh, voice on one track and mine on the other, and we were able to edit them and post after and keep them the levels um, consistent because Gary was a very, very soft speaker, and I tend to speak very loud with a lot more plosives and stuff like that. So I'm really trying to ride my volume and uh, boost his, and it was it was tricky. So that kind of saved me, saved my life there. So um, I agree. A pod, a, a podcast stage for sure on Curtis Judd. Uh, um, Jared Poland from Frono's Photo was someone I used to follow a lot. I haven't watched a lot of his stuff anymore just because I, uh, I, I just really haven't. But he was a major influence on me, uh, Ray Ortega, in the community as far as um, you know his stuff as well too, a, a huge influence on podcasting and microphones and, of course, uh, photography and things like that as well too, been a major influence. Okay, so I think I might have found the question or maybe at least a statement from Gamut says, I've not uh, long set up the NT1A vocal recording pack along... Um, Along with the PSA boom arm, I'm currently looking into a few inexpensive mixers at the moment. I agree their packaging is indeed fantastic. So I know uh, Quentin, he has the same package as well, too. He's What he has is the same thing as what Gambit has, the NT1, and uh, which is right here, this microphone, as I pointed out earlier. And I wish I could show you. I have the, res I have the amplifier underneath my desk. It's a really, really cool interface for your computer. It's basically a studio package all in one where you have a small block about like this which is kind of the amplifier, the mixer, and everything all in one, has phantom power. The thing is a solid steel chassis, and it hooks by USB to your Mac or, uh, to your Mac or your, uh, to your PC. It allows you to run in either the microphone with phantom power or a guitar cable, quarter inch, into it as well, and lets you run out. Now, the funny thing is I'm only using that NT, uh, NTI-1. What, NT, it's up here. <laughs> uh, NTAA-1, uh, the, the complete studio package. I'm using it just as an interface for my PC, which is off to my right. When you see me jamming on the air, because I'm running Mac for my live shows, the PC controls my tunes, sends that through the Rode interface off to my mixer, and that that that's my USB 
out to my mixer for that computer. So that's kind of cool. So I'm actually tying two computers into one mixer via different interfaces, which is very, very cool. So yeah, he says uh, he loves the uh, the packaging and stuff like that. And in a moment here too, we're going to explore a few other things from Rode as well too, just to show you some of the things that I use here, we use here as a family. And to go back to what I, I kind of alluded that earlier, um, both these companies that contact us for reviews, and I've, I've de politely declined them. One of the companies I've mentioned this on, on my show before too, they're it's a it's a major company who owns about 15 companies and they provide they're the, one of the companies who provide the lighting that you see here and i know you probably can't see any of my lighting which is a good thing i'm trying not to, to show you my lighting i'm you don't you don't want to see lighting you want to just experience lighting right but i'm i'm working with a company that um um provide like generay is is one of the companies of the generay is a lighting company Right, and I'm using a nice giant uh, LED uh, ring light, which is right in front of me. I'm looking at it right now. That provides some illumination on my face. I've got a lot of uh, multiple LED panels uh, and the other things uh, all around the room here as well too, and I love them. But they, one of their sister companies also makes microphones, and they said, hey, we've got a new light. Would you like to review it and blah, blah, blah. We've also got this microphone. And I'm like, okay, the lighting, yes, I'll, ta I'll take that for sure. But the, the microphone I have to pass on. And it's so cool, recently... They contacted me and said, we've got this new boundary mic out. Now, this would be something cool for podcast stage because um, I have no I have no use for a boundary mic. And he, and, he, and they my guy at the company says, no, Rode doesn't have something like this particular microphone, so you'd probably be fine to to review it. And I'm like, I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And both these companies, both the company I'm working with, the lighting and all their sister companies, plus Rode, I think they appreciate that because I, I love this stuff. I really do. I love Rode products. Uh, and it's it's comfortable to me as when I play my favorite guitar or my favorite presets or my favorite tone on my guitar. It's just that comfort thing. So I like to stay in that zone if that makes any sense. So it's very very cool and they, it's a mutual respect. And I think if you know the people that they jump from brand to brand, you know a lot of times a lot of these product reps will you know they one guy that could be a product rep at company X one day uh, in the next six months could be a product rep at the next company. And if you kind of like, ah, I don't like your product, it stinks, go to the next one. Now your next, the, the guy that was your boss last time or your your uh, alliance, so to speak, will be working at that company. And you're kind of like, okay, <laughs> you're you're painted into a corner. Let's see if we can find, okay, Cat's Guitar Lessons. What's the best mic for recording vocals singing for Logic on Mac? Please, I have a Helix, not native, just a floor pedal. I'm new to try and record any advice, welcome. And this is something I hope, because uh, I'm way behind in the chat, I'm hoping possibly uh, Bandra from Podcast Stage might answer that one. And I'm going, to, he may have already. Uh, and I see Gambit's question coming up as well too. So I think I found that. So let's have a, let's reread that again too. What's the best mic for recording vocal singing for Logic on Mac? I have a Helix, not native, just a fl just the floor. Okay, no problem. So the, first of all, the Helix products uh, will allow you to use a condenser microphone that, that supplies phantom power. Most condenser microphones, pretty much all, will require phantom power. They need voltage to fire up the gain or whatever. Here again, podcast stage could mention this better than I can, but you need to power the microphone. And if your mixer doesn't have um, power to it, as far as phantom power, usually around, what, 48 volts or something like that, uh, you need to buy a phantom power supply. Now, my mixer, the AR12 USB from Personas, does have phantom power. It's basically a global on, global off. The Rodecaster Pro mixer, which you saw me do the unboxing a while ago, it has phantom power, and you can turn that on globally or actually individually by channel. But the Helix has it as well, too. So any condenser microphone will work, and I would recommend a condenser. Price-wise, I would. Um, and uh, here again, I'm looking forward to hearing what uh, Bandrew may say. Um, but I am going to recommend this one here. For recording with Logic, the NT NT one. Um, let me see. What do I? Yeah, the NT the NT one. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have up here that I would probably this guy right here. The NT one um, would make make a great vocal uh, recording microphone. Put it on a mic stand, whatever. I've got another one. Uh, yeah, actually, you can see one way back there. Where I'm trying to point to it. Way. Let's get my finger on it. I'm almost touching it right there. There's another NT one back there on a microphone stand. Sometimes if I'm doing voiceovers and I want to stand up. I tend to get some better projection. I go to that microphone. I've also got an NT1 on the 412 right there. So it goes to show you the versatility of that microphone. I use that to mic the 5150 as well too. So it's it's a uh, it's a, a, a diverse, a, kind of a well-rounded microphone. And I think you'll get good vocals out of it. It'll also double as a really nice microphone for recording recording acoustic guitar. 
things like that, maybe real piano, all that kind of stuff. So there you go, CADs. Um, it's probably not the definitive answer, and it's not necessarily the be all, uh, you know, the actual answer. It's my answer, my opinion, and uh, I'll look forward to possibly hearing an answer from Podcast Stage because he knows Mike's a lot better than me. It's all about his channel. Um, and I'd love to have some conversation with him about that for sure. Uh, Philip Cochran is here. Um, let me see here. Gambit says, just out of curiosity, if you don't mind me, what studio reference headphones are you using right now? Okay, this is where I am embarrassed. <laughs> I am very embarrassed. Okay, I'm using, okay, uh, Audio, Audio Technica stuff is good stuff. They, they make some great stuff. And like I say, I used to use their AT2020 microphone, swore by it, it was a good microphone. Um, but I'm still using an Audio Technica. I'll show you them. They're, they're ridiculous. You've seen me use them before. Some people have. I have to say this. They're cheap headphones. They're K55s. Um, <laughs> it's, the, it's the most inferior product I have in the studio. K55 stereo headphones. But I got to say, these are probably 10 years old, probably somewhere in that neighborhood. I've dropped them a million times. I haven't fixed a cable yet. They still work. There's no cutouts. I, w- I would, you know, I'd give anything for Rode to make headphones. I hope they do someday. I don't know. It's one of the things they stick to what they do best. Um, I'm looking at possibly trying some Yamaha reference uh, headphones in the very near future. They, they, those ones, they are what they are. They're probably about a $55 pair of headphones. I don't do any mixing in my headphones, and the only thing I use those for really is if I'm doing a live jam, and, uh, and very rarely if I'm using the 5150 amplifier back there when it's really, really loud here in the room, I need something to kill some of the external audio. So I need to get that out of my ears. And the, the earbuds from Apple won't do that. I need something to... They're not noise-canceling headphones, but they're at least taking some of that noise out of my ears. That's the only reason why I use those. Uh, so, Gambit, I'm sure you probably have <laughs> much better headphones than I do, and probably a lot of you watching this do. It's just one of those things where I haven't had a real need yet. Like, I don't do any mixing with headphones and things like that, so there probably won't be any real need for me to upgrade. But I am going to look at some Yamaha stuff as well, too, in the very near future. Um, let me see here. Continue down. So nice uh, links here shared by Nocturnal Butterfly. She's got the link to facebook.com slash road mic. Oh, and you know what? I, I didn't get here. I'm just coming up to podcast stage again, too. And I forgot to mention this. A huge round of applause. Uh, they just reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube the other day. It's a really, really cool thing. That's a massive, massive milestone. And he puts in a lot of work. Um, I myself can sympathize with the amount of work that goes into uh, running a channel, especially doing reviews and, and stuff like that. I know he doesn't get much sleep. So 100,000 subscribers. I know he's, he's already surpassed that. So congratulations. And he does have a comment. He says, I will say that Rode seems to be the most supportive of the creator community and their social media presence is extremely beneficial if you need help. Love that about them. They remind me uh, very much like two other companies that I'm uh, very close with as well, too, is with Gibson Guitars, with Gibson slash Kramer slash Epiphone. Their social media team is on point. They they th- that is a huge, huge paramount uh, of, uh, of a backbone to a company is being able to interact with your customers, consumers, but, uh, old customers, new whatever. Whether it be settling a dispute or you know product information is very very important, I, and also the team at uh, at Yamaha Guitar Group and Line Six Helix or Line Six with the Helix products and all that kind of stuff, their customer service is is in something like almost like you it's almost like a, it's like a dream you would not expect customer service to be like that. So these three companies right off the bat, Rode, uh, Line Six, and of course the Gibson brands, very very important. So that's a great point from podcast stage. Uh, Chris Link is here. I'm not sure if I said hello to him as well, too. And uh, people commenting to uh, to podcast stages, comments as well, too. And Todd Graff is here saying, glad to see the internet is working for you. Yeah, it is temporarily. It's not. I guarantee you I'm going to check it again tonight, 7, 8 o'clock. It's going to go down. I, I, I don't know what it is, but hopefully we have this uh, uh, fixed very, very soon. Um, this is cool. The gold color says, hey, Miss Nam show this year. And uh, and you. So, yes, I have a new upcoming podcast called Fireside Chats. Very, very cool. Nice. Very, very nice. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. Putting up on my the usual when a good show is on. Okay, nice. Uh, podcast stage t- taken off. He says, uh, time to edit. Good luck on the video. He says, I will catch the video on demand after I'm finished up. Have a great rest of your stream, Eric. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we're going to talk about some other microphones here, and we'll wrap up here shortly as well, too. 
Uh, and yeah, you know what? Gambit saying uh, to Podcast Age, uh, Diety Microphones is another company that is very supportive. I sent them a bunch of questions about their uh, lab on Twitter and they were very helpful. And I think I saw a video just recently uh, from Podcast Age on that particular brand of microphones. If not, I think Curtis Judd did as well too. I've seen some people talking about them. So very cool. Uh, let me see here. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Cat's guitar lessons. Uh, talk about in ear monitors. Very cool. And I've got some in ear monitors, um, but I don't like them. They're they're just kind of a, a knockoff brand, and they won't fit in my ears, so I don't use them. I'd like to use them because they sound good. You know what I mean? I just can't get them in. Okay, a couple of people I, sc I scrolled past, and I did not get a chance to say hi to Rock and Roll Guitar Lounges here. Thank you so much. Uh, let me see if I missed anybody else. We're going to jump over some other products that we use here very, very soon and give you some ideas on those as well, too. Scott Connor. Um, Brian Cote is here. Nice to see you, buddy. And Mel O'Brien, you and me and Rain on the Roof, caught up in the summer shower, hoping we'll be here for hours. <laughs> let me see here. Uh, start a Gab account for EVH and Gear TV Network. Let me see. Defcon Clark, are you going to summer in NAM? Maybe. We're thinking about doing it as a family, uh, the three of us. Uh, Defcon, so we we may do that. We're not 100 percent sure. I mean, we 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 have passes for it, so that's not a problem. It's just whether or not we're gonna we determine we're gonna go. We'll, we'll see. We, we're really thinking about it as a family trip, so we'll think about it. Uh, well, Varela says, uh, "Glad to see you're back on here." Also, I dig the look. Don't let the stash grow fully. <laughs> okay, we're working on it. We're we're not sure where it's at yet. Let me see here. Um, I don't know if I missed anybody. If I did, I apologize. So let's, okay, I'm going to put the NT USB down. So the last thing I'll show you that comes in the box with this as well. So this is obviously Nocturnal's microphone. Under the little kit inside here, it comes with a uh, very lengthy USB cable. Quite, I'm going to say probably a good 15 feet, if not 20 feet. Nice carry case. And I think there's something in here. I forget what this is. I've opened them before. I totally forget. Oh yeah, the the big the big manual that you don't necessarily have to read it's thick as you can see and of course our stickers i love road microphones very very cool all right so we're going to put that down we're going to go through a few other road microphones that are used here in the studio and what they're used for and we'll wrap things up So at least we finally got that unboxing done. It was supposed to have been done a week ago. And unfortunately, with that internet connection, we just couldn't do it. So let's start off kind of small. A lot of people are getting into, you know, this YouTube thing. YouTube is, is so popular today. Everyone wants to be, you know, on YouTube and filming stuff. And where a lot of people go wrong on YouTube is, you know, they'll upload a video and, the, you know, the video might be okay and the audio is horrible or the audio might be good and the, and the video is horrible. And studies have shown that people will kind of weed through some crappy video quality as long as it's pleasant to the ears because if you think about it a lot of times we're watching videos at least for me I'm not necessarily watching it like verbatim I'm I'm doing something I might have it open another tab and I may, might be multitasking working or doing some paperwork or whatever so you're not necessarily always watching the video but if that audio quality is horrible it tends to make you kind of like okay I'm, I'm uncomfortable and I'm just going to switch the channel and go to watch something else so for, for usually very inexpensive investments, you know, a lot of people filming with their camcorders, I sorry, their cameras these days, like particularly me, I'm using like Nikon cameras, whether you're using a Nikon or Canon or Panasonic or, you know, it, there's millions of cameras out there, right, that record audio. As long as you have a microphone jack on your camera, some of these things are, are a godsend. You've got your Rode VideoMic Pro, all right? So here's your VideoMic Pro, like a typical, you know, uh, shotgun style microphone. They've made some great improvements over this. Uh, this is a video mic pro on the back. You've got on and off. You've got like some high pass filters and things like that. You've also got some gain stages, right? From zero to plus 10 to I think even plus 20, uh, depending on where you are and in, in, in the environment, maybe you're in a concert and it's just like booming, booming volume and you want to cut some of that volume back. You can do that, right? Your typical 3.5 millimeter jack that'll go in your camera. Then they came out recently, about a year ago, they came out with the video mic pro plus, and you can see the differences in size. I'll try to show you in a comparison. Okay. Considerably bigger. Um, and a lot of extra really cool features on here. One of the things being a removable cable, which is nice. So you can use a short cable, long cable, whatever you want. You could actually even use this on a mic stand technically and then run a cable to, uh, to a camera off, off out of frame, whatever. You've got your typical um, gain stages. You've even got a safety channel, which is cool. A safety channel will actually reduce the gain in one of the channels by, I think, around minus 6 dB or even more. I don't want to quote, quote that because I'm not 100% sure, but at least minus 6 dB. So let's say you're recording something and you've got something that just spikes. 
and boom, and all of a sudden your audio being ruined, you've got the safety channel now left or right. I think it's on the right channel. So your right channel is now decreased. You can save yourself. You might be doing that particular interview that might just be the greatest thing ever, and it got ruined by someone spiking. You've got a safety channel to save that. It has automatic power on, high and low pass filters. So if you've got some rumbling on the street, you can filter that out with a high pass filter, all that kinds of good stuff. And the cool thing is I'll show you by having one here on the camera. This is my go-to camera microphone. So on my, my Nikon camera with the auto power on feature, as soon as I turn on my camera, as I'll show you here, the microphone comes on, as you can see there as well too. So what a lot of people do, myself has, I, I've had this happen to me many times, I'll go to shoot something, I'll go to turn on the microphone, um, and it's battery's dead. Or, number two, even worse, God forbid, you go to shoot a really cool interview, and you're filming, you're filming, you're filming, hey, this is great, video's looking good, my focus is great, but guess what I forgot to do? Turn on my microphone. There's nothing you can do to save that unless you put subtitles on and you're going to be a laughing stock. So it's a blessing, an absolute blessing. Uh, and of course, you've got all your gain stages. So if I was to go in here and on my camera, I'll try to do this right now just to show you. I'm going to go into microphone settings. All right. I'm going to go to microphone sensitivity. And I have it on four right now. And you can see my gain staging right now. I'll try to show this on the camera. Watch this. This might be kind of neat. Can I focus on it? Test one, two, one, two, testing one, two. That's my just speaking towards the microphone. That's not too bad. It's not distorting. So that's just picking up from there. And I know you can't hear that, but you're at least getting a visual representation of what it is speaking into the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. And as I shut it off, there we go. A second. Goes off. So you And it has a rechargeable battery built into it, which is great. The VideoMic Pro uh, video mic pro is your, um, your nine volt, uh, battery that you would put in there and you have to actually literally replace. This one is a rechargeable battery. It comes with a USB cable. You can barely see the USB jack, but it is right there. And you recharge it on your computer. Okay. Jump over to some of the other products. Maybe, maybe you don't want to get into a full blown DSLR. They can be expensive, you know, minimum five, 600 bucks for a good one. And then you got to buy the microphone on top of it. Maybe you've got a nice, maybe you're in this case, we're going to talk about Apple devices, iOS. Maybe you've got one of the more modern iPhones or an iPad. You could use something like this as well too. They brought this out a while back, the video mic me L, which is uh, the L stands for lightning. They also have the typical me, which would be a 3.5 millimeter jack that you just plug into the, the headphone microphone jack on your phone. Now I've got, there's one in here, but I've also got one open, which also comes with its own filter as well too. But here's what it is. There's your lightning jack right there, okay? And that could plug into the front, they could plug in one way like this. So if you're you're filming the subject, I'm holding my iPad or my phone towards you, the microphone is pointing at you, or I could have it the other way with the other camera on the device pointing at myself. And uh, if you're doing like a selfie video or a, a vlog or that kind of thing, you could have aiming at yourself basically plug and play, plug it in, no drivers needed, ready to go. And it comes with a giant sock if you want to use it outside in the wind, like in a, in a, in a windy condition like today. There you go. Fluff it up. You've got no wind. And you'd be surprised how much wind it will drastically cut. So there's a few options that way. Another thing I use here a lot tremendously, uh, a lot of times, sometimes even on the live streams, if I'm doing an unboxing, which I could have done today, I could have got these microphones out of my way. Um, that I could use the wireless labs, and I'll show you those in a second, but I think there's some more questions I, I see as well, too. Okay, I'll, I'll say, uh, will do. Okay, Nocturnal Butterflies letting me know there's great questions in the chat, so let's jump over there as well, too. Um, let's scroll back and see where I left off here. Let me see here. <laughs> Getting mustache comments. Let me see here. Um, Brian Cote, let me see here. Just trying to get down to it as well, too. Uh, talking about the K240s. Okay, let me see here. Uh, Defcon Clark says, a moment I'm planning on going to NAM. Just going to try to see if I can get down to the uh, the questions here as well, too. Gareth Olander, hey, Eric, looking to change pickups in my Kramer Pacer. Any suggestions on a passive set? Yes. Um, now, did it come Did it come with the Seymour Duncan JBs? Because that is what I use. They came factory in mine, and I like the JBs. Um Duncan Customs, not a bad pickup. Custom Custom, maybe. Uh, the, I, that was probably about the only pickups I would ever use in my guitars outside of, you know, EVH Wolfgang pickups and things like that as well, too. So Duncan JB or Custom would be my 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 favorites. So I hope that is a bit of an answer for you. Um, let me see. I'm going to continue on see if I see any other questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris Link says, I have no clue on how to edit any sound levels past my live rig, and so this would help. For sure. 
And uh, Will Varel says, Eric, I've told size doesn't matter. Guitar Fish is here saying hello all. Um, continue on. I'm trying to find these questions. I'm sure I'm getting to them. Let me see here. Um, the the gold color says, can you use USB on your camera into the studio computer for setting? Se okay, so let me read that again. Can you USB your camera into studio computer for setting from computer for that camera? No, what you need to do in a case like that is you need to use, um, you need to come out of your HDMI from your camera. Okay, well, yeah, you pretty much have to. Come out of your camera HDMI to an HDMI uh, capture card. You can buy anything from those cheap overseas ones to, you know, Elgato and things like that, like the, the better ones and all these other various uh, uh, HDMI converter cards. Uh, that's something I want to do a very in the very near future as well too because I want to be able to use my cameras both for sometimes audio and video to do some of my uh, web live streams as well too. So coming out HDMI is the best way to do that. I think there might be some HDMI to USB converters. I'm not sure. I don't sh I'm not sure how reliable they are. So so the gold color, I think the best way to go is HDMI out if your camera has that, and then you're going to need a capture card as well too. Uh, Gambit says, I'm guilty of the sin of my audio and my videos being an afterthought since I started on YouTube. However, with that being said, I've recently bought some audio equipment to rectify that. And there you go. And I'm sure your people that watch your channel will appreciate that when they see the growth of uh, you know the commitment as well too, trying to get audio and video better, and that's something where I feel that I'm, I think my audio right now is better than my video, and uh, and the video is now the part that I'm working on improving. Lighting for the longest time was a struggle for me, and even though I'm not a thousand percent, I shouldn't say that. Even though I'm not a hundred percent where I want to be with lighting, I still have to experiment. I want to put some track lighting up here with some pots and some you know uh, soft spots that I can project in certain areas of the room. That's gonna be my next thing. And I'll be working that with, uh, on that with the company that I work closely with right now. But I'm very, very happy. At least you can see me in the room now. And it's some, some decent lighting. And I can control the temperature of the lighting as well, too, which is really cool. Like the, the ring light that's behind my monitor, I could actually survive just on that. And to give you an idea, let me turn that off for a second and show you just with that ring light off what we're missing. So even though I've got good lighting behind me, um, that ring light is, and I've got it on a, I've got it on 5600K, which is daylight, uh, can, a daylight color, but I can turn it from daylight to tungsten to warm up the room. So let me put it back on again. Now that's on 5600K daylight. I'm going to roll the temperature on the light and bring it more to a tungsten color. One sec. So now, and actually, that's not bad. I actually like that. That's that's a much warmer temperature. I can't actually see. There's a there's a number on the back of the ring light that'll tell me the actual temperature, uh, but I, I like that. That's a more of a warmer effect. So I'm gonna, for argument's sake, I'm gonna leave it here for the rest of the show. Um, but that is, you can see the difference what that does for me just with that light alone. And that's really nice if you're a single like a, a vlogger. And that light that it's up there will actually fit as an adapter on this camera. It'll go around the light. So as I'm looking at myself like this, speaking to the camera. And the microphone, I've got the giant ring light, which will illuminate your face and give you a really nice, uh, you know, a projection onto the onto the video. Let's see if we can continue on down as well, too. So it's good to see people like that, like Gambit, you know, and myself and other people that are always trying to improve for the audience. Because we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it so it's a better experience for you because there's a million things to watch on YouTube. And we're hoping that you'll, you'll spend a few minutes out of your day to watch us. So when you do, we're trying to give you the best audio and visual experience that you can possibly have. Not the best, but the best we can give you. Right? There's always going to be someone better. Um, and uh, uh, Brian Cote says... Can I use a 12 volt power into a pedal that is 9 volts? In some cases, it's 12 or, or even 18 volts. In some cases, yes, Brian, but I don't want to be the person that says yes because you plug that into your pedal uh, and it could fry it. Some pedals will take that. I know there's some that are 9 that you can use an 18 volt on it for sure. Check the manual. That's the first thing I, I say right off the get go. Check the manual first because a lot of times, you know, if you void, it could void the warranty and then you're out of luck. So I don't want to be the person that says yes. It's always, always depends on the pedal. Uh, I saw a good question there. Um, and, and, and the, uh, the gold color says, if you're podcasting, you need a board a soundboard period. Yes. You can always start off with a microphone. Uh, you know, a USB microphone can get you there as a start. But once you get further than that, like it's funny when I was telling some of my friends uh, about um, the, what I was using for a board, like I'm using 16 channels right now and they are maxed 100% max. They're like, well, Dude, you talk on a microphone. What do you need all these channels for? It's absolutely insane. 
Uh, I mean, without going in full details, I've got several Helix products running in here, and a lot of times I'm using uh, at least one of those in a live environment. I've got a vocal microphone. I've got to have microphones from my guests either physically in studio or from remote. I'm using, if I'm doing um, jamming, uh, I'm using a secondary computer completely for that, running into the mixer. I've got wireless mics. Like, it's just, it's absolutely stupid. And it's, so you need a board. And how did, when I got this AR12, which is technically it's a 16 channel if you're using some of the uh, the um, the quarter inch jacks and the RCA jacks and stuff like that as well too. And it even has a super channel by USB. I've maxed that completely. I would have went with the bigger one had I known what I was going to need. So there's another piece of advice. If you're thinking about getting into podcasting, getting your first board, buy bigger than you think you need. And you'll thank me later because you'll very, very quickly, it's like saying, okay, I want to I build a, a guitar room in my house. Right, we're going to build our new house. I want a little room for my guitars. And I think I only need a six by six. Then, then you know, a year down the road, you start collecting guitars and all that kind of stuff. That six by six now is, is completely, you know, you've, you've, uh, you're busting at the seams. Always go bigger than what you think you need, and especially when it comes to audio. Uh, get more channels than what you need. They can sit there empty for a year, but when the day comes and you need them, it's best to always have headroom is, I guess, the best way to go with that. So uh, very much do I agree with Gold Color there. Uh, Gambit says, I know if, uh, if I'd known back when I started that I know now, I would have ensured my audio was up to par along with my video. Listen, you look at any pro YouTuber out there, and you look at some of the original things out there, and they're they're horrific at the beginning, myself included. You know, it's embarrassing, but I, I leave them up there. Some of these things that are they're embarrassing to me now to watch, but I'm hoping that it encourages someone else that you know, yes, I can get into the game and start with with nothing, and and go from there. And you watch some of the insecurities, you're afraid to talk to the camera, you know, all those kind of things. The, the, I leave those there for a reason, for kind of maybe to inspire people that you can do it. And, it, and even if you have five subscribers, whatever the minimum is now to go live, uh, I think it, um, I don't even know what the number is. I, well, I, I guess to live stream from your device, it's a thousand, but I think it's a, a much smaller number to be able to do live streaming. Whatever that number is, forget about what you have, just do it and, and go live and don't worry about the content. Just get on there and you'll, you'll develop a following uh, for sure as well too. Um, okay, and say I'll, I'll say okay on this. I'm getting some more questions funneled to me. We'll jump back over to some more mics here in just a second as well, too, because I just started to hint at the wireless labs. Uh, Ron Limber is here. Philip Cochran. Um, some pedals are very sensitive to voltage and amperage. Very, very well said. Uh, Gold Color says I buy a lot of gear on eBay. Best prices. Do not like. Uh, uh, yeah, Bezos and that's uh, Amazon stuff like that. Yeah, eBay probably a little safer. Maybe. Um, uh, reverb as well too maybe Zach Thong is here Poo Ninja just dropping in a thumbs up I'll have to catch a repost no problem I appreciate you jumping in Terry GG and G talking with the crowd here as well too um, let me see here I saw uh, and Gold Color says okay first of all Cat's Guitar Lessons very good advice about audio quality thank you the Gold Color I saw in the Daryl Hall show the camera and the background being used okay nice very nice he saw that camera nice I'm going to go backwards from the chat because uh, there's a couple of questions. Derek Merrill is here. Um, and Todd Graff, that does look better for the ring light. I love the ring light. If I had to only have one thing, like if I was doing like a late night stream, I would use just the ring light if I wanted to. And you wouldn't see all the stuff in the background, but it illuminates me and illuminates the guest. I'm not just talking about me, but the guest or the person on the camera is the most important. Make sure that that person is illuminated and they can be seen. Or if you're behind the camera and you're shining it at the at the person, at the interviewee, make sure they're, they're lit up. Uh, let me see here. A Gambit says, I too struggle with the lighting for the longest time. I bought some inexpensive soft boxes off of Amazon. However, they are big and bulky and take up a lot of room. I still have one soft box left, which is up to here. You can't see it. And it, I have it aimed up. Here's a little tip I'll share with you for people that want to be on the, on, the, on the down low for expenses and use these soft boxes. I still have some. Shine them up at your, at your ceiling, ceiling and let the light fall on you. It's better to have that than the lights blasting on you, light falling on you just like in a natural environment. I'm not an expert, but trust me, it works. Let the light fall on you. And these soft boxes I have, which have about five receptacles in them with each with 5,600K bulbs, daylight bulbs, um, they've fallen down, they broke, and I agree with the bulkiness. They're, they're a pain in the butt. And that's why I'm really, really happy to have gone now with LED panels. And I wish I could show you some. I hate to get out of my my seat here at the moment and drag some of these over here. Uh, you can see one behind me, just off to right, right there. It's not turned on. 
right now it's aimed at the ceiling but it's not turned on and you can see a slight glow off that microphone where's the microphone right over there you can see a slight little glow little halo there that's coming from one of the led panels which i don't actually have aimed 100 percent right because you wouldn't be, not be seeing that glow if i did have it but uh lighting is very very important um continue on so i think um chris i can go live on youtube i think you can I forget the actual number you have to have to be able just to be able to live stream. And then there is obviously now that are new requirements where you can't live stream from a mobile device unless you have a thousand subscribers. But if you're from a computer, I think it's like 50 subscribers or something like that. I'm, a, I'm embarrassed that um, uh, I don't know that exact number. Um, yes. And Dale Palmer says most YouTubers started out using uh, a cell phone and low end camera. Agreed. Agreed. hundred percent. Okay, and I'm just waiting for that question. Um, let me see here. I'll say, did he ask it? I don't see it. While we're waiting for further questions, which we will wrap up here soon, I know Junior is probably really excited for me to wrap up a stream because he's waiting for me to reformat his reformat his Mac. He wants it back to factory, and he actually texted me during the broadcast. He goes, "This doesn't look formatted." I thought I reformatted. It has everything still on there, so I had to go back and uh, and help him with that. Uh, Scott Connor says, "Everyone has humble beginnings for sure." Uh, Terry says Razer actually sells a webcam for streaming that has a ring light on it. Yep, but it's only optimized for 720p and super expensive. Yeah, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna pay a lot of money and I'm only getting 720p, I, I'm not interested uh, whatsoever. I, I want minimum 1080p for sure. I'm not ready to jump into um, uh, I'm not ready to jump into 4K yet, but I, I will be doing that very soon. At least I can downscale to 1080p and have you know some great headroom. Let's jump now to a couple last things. So we talked about the. Uh, wireless kits that Rode has. Rode has a couple of them, and this one here is called. It comes in a kit called the Wireless Filmmaker Kit. Com, com, it comes with two d uh, devices that look almost identical. You'll see RX on one, which is receiver, and TX on the other, which is transmitter. These things are built like a little tank. They kind of have like a bit of a. I've done a really cool review on these. I really encourage you to check out the one review I did using these in the field. I actually went out to a literal soccer field and I walked. They, they claim this will work for like 100 meters or 100 yards, whatever, wirelessly outside. So I put it to that literal test. I went outside in the soccer field and I was reading some of the specs off my phone of the, of the product and I walked in the wind, crazy, crazy wind. I tried that. And uh, I, it's, it's a fantastic mic. Now I've got a bunch of these here. I think I've got four complete kits. And they're, they're very easy to pair, to, to talk to one another. So let's say I reach into my bag of mics and I had like a mix match uh, pair of them. I can pair them up very, very easy. And I'm going to turn them both on for a second. Okay. Now they're both on channel one right now. You can probably see ones. Try to see if you can see that. All right. So right now they're both talking to each other as channel one. But I could pair them up with any other device in the Rode brand. Uh, no problem. But what's really cool about it is, okay, so on the transmitter... All right, so actually that's a receiver, sorry. On your transmitter, you just plug in your uh, wireless la lavalier microphone. All right, plug it in like that. They have kind of like this Kevlar type of material, almost like what they use like on uh, bulletproof vests as the microphone sheath on it. So it's, they can take a good tug without breaking them. I've only broke one in my probably four years of owning these products and it was complete human error i had the i had the belt pack on my belt i was sitting at the kitchen table and i got up and i yanked the cable like extremely hard and it didn't break the cable just broke something inside and road was very very kind to immediately send me a replacement like practically overnight so you have your nice little lavalier microphone here i'll try to show you close up all right so that is it right there comes with a clip a lot of times what i'll do is i'll take the clip off right and if it's myself if I'm interviewing, or if I'm not interviewing myself, if I'm doing a video, a voiceover, whatever, I will literally run the uh, the cable under my shirt and I'll tape it to my skin, which sometimes can hurt. <coughs> you yank off the hair, but I'll tape it right about he right about here. I'm trying to get it like that under my chest, and where a lot of people um, will go wrong is they want to talk like this and talk into the microphone. You don't want to do that. You want to talk to the subject just as you normally would. The microphone will pick it up. It's got gain stages on it as well. If you open up the back door. You've got gain stages like I showed you on the other microphones, right, right about there. Uh, the button for pa pairing it with another device. So that's a Rode Filmmaker kit. I'm just going to turn it back off right now as well too. And we'll go over to another product from them as well too. All right, so let's turn that off. Hold them both. They should both go off. Okay, they're powering down. All right. 
also they also have one for people that want to do uh, news gathering or if you want let's say you want to go to a convention you want to interview this one has really taken its uh, my mic flag has taken some abuse at NAM this was NAM this was brand new before I went to NAM and it was getting banged around but road this is their uh, road reporter microphone okay all right you see the road reporter and I'm using which is called the reporter I'm uh, sorry the news shooter kit so this is a wireless add-on that I can actually unscrew maybe I've got it on there pretty tight right now. If I can't unscrew it right now, we're just going to leave it. I have it on maybe a little too tight. Oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. It's just a wireless pack that can... You don't have to use it on a Rode microphone. Um, you can uh, you can use it on any microphone. Use it on a Shure. Use it on whatever you want. Like a, um, I also have another popular microphone here too, the Electro Voice RE50B, which is one of the industry standards when it comes to electronic news gathering. So it's just a typical thing with an XLR jack on the top. You turn it on just like... a the other products, right? Press and holding it. Did I turn it on? I'm not doing it right. Okay. And it takes your tip, typical Sony style, NP style batteries, rechargeable batteries. So now it's telling me what channel I'm on. It's got phantom power and everything on it as well too. I can actually plug in a headphone right there as well too. So I could use like a, like a mono earphone while I'm speaking to a guest. I could actually monitor in my ear what I'm hearing. So if your levels are too low or too high, you would know. But very, very nice. Now here's the cool thing. Watch this. If I was to, let me see, this is a receiver here. So it works with these receivers as well, too. You're going to get, this is the transmitter. This is the receiver, just like we showed you a moment ago. Now, when I turned this on a minute ago, you saw that I was on channel one, and I still will be. Watch this. I'll turn it on. It's upside down. Okay, so I'm on channel one, right? This one is on channel three. So what I need to do here is a little, little more tricky on this one to pair on this one than it is on these ones. On this one here, I just have to hit the red button to pair. On this one here, I hit these two buttons together to pair. Now watch this. I'm going to hit those two together. Okay, and I'm going to hit the red one here. And I didn't hit, did I hit pair on this one? It's still the same pair. And I think, actually, let me see. Let's try that again. There we go. I'm trying to see what do we got. One. And one. So we're paired. So you just reach into your bag of microphones uh, and your transmitters or whatever, and it's so very easy to pair. And the cool thing is when you're at a convention or something like that, and maybe there's some people competing with frequencies, other people like the other people using similar products, it'll always scan for the best frequency, and it'll automatically switch over to it so you don't have to worry about losing your potential audio. And I think, oh, yeah, we got one more here. And we have another question here as well, too. Let's jump, try to field that question first. So that saved my butt at uh, NAM was a, a great thing and it's a good microphone that you can pass back and forth to your guest and uh, you don't really and it filters out a lot of the noise because conventions are horrible it's all this background roar you don't get that and you have to kind of be on the microphone a little bit pass back and forth and you get a really really good response it saved my butt multiple times I, we'll take one more question here I saw here and then well maybe a couple more questions and we'll finish up with one last mic um Brian Cote I use Streamlabs on my phone to stream yes I've heard of that that's been kind of the workaround uh, for sure. Um, Big Fly Music, check one, check two. Hola, nice to have you here. Derek Merrill says, I have several I have several questions because I'm new to the Stomp, and uh, this is for Line 6 Stomp. Uh, is it better to use a four cable method going into an EVH 5150 or straight in, looking to use mostly the effects? Um, okay, well, that's, that's a double-edged question because if you're using strictly effects, like if you're using just reverbs, delays, and things like that, then I would say just use it in the effects loop. But... There's going to be other effects you're going to want to use as well, too, like your phasing, flanging, all that kind of stuff. Waz, you're going to run and run that to the front of the amplifier. So four cable method is the probably definitive answer for you on that one. Uh, Daryl, so, or Derek, I'm sorry. So that would be my answer to that one. That's a Line 6 Helix Stomp question. And that's a great question because today, today, is, today is technically the Helix Hour Day. Anyways, we're just using content and another source today. So I hope that answers your question, and I'm very happy to help you. He has another one a follow-up as well, too. Uh, when creating a new patch in HX Stomp, do you have to be concerned with what method you're running the Stomp for, cable or direct? Not necessarily, because you can create that and put the effects order in any order that you want, and then let's say you're optimizing it just for reference monitors uh, directly to monitors, and it sounds good there, but you want to now use it in, a, in an environment where you uh, an amplifier, just reroute it a little bit or make a copy and paste 
copy that preset and then just change the path that you need for that particular uh, setup. If you want to use to an amplifier and for a cable method, then you'd maybe optimize it for that. But uh, don't worry about it as you're creating it. Just get a good sound. That's the most important thing first. And then you can always look at rerouting things if you're going to be switching your setup a little bit. Uh, Chris Link says, I only need a few more subscribers to get to 50 so I could go live. Hint, hint, hint. So if anyone wants to subscribe to Chris Link, help him out uh, so he can go start doing some, subscribers, some, uh, some live streams. That would be fantastic. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, Dale Palmer says, I think it was a matter of not wanting to give support to the mobile app for those that don't have enough subs to pay for the extra bandwidth. I don't know what the reason was before. There's all kinds of theories for sure. Um, I don't know the reason behind it. Uh, Frank uh, Corcoran is here. Nice to have you here. And I think, uh, oh yeah, uh, the, uh, Brian says, I like the new Rode Wireless set. It's very cool. Yes, that is, I have a set coming that should be here this week. That's called the Rode Wireless Go. It's a very, very nice um, kit. Basically like a clip-on lapel, and uh, it's like a square one, uh, about yay big. And it also has the ability to hook in a lavalier mic as well too, if you don't want to use a built-in mic. Now it will not pair with these devices. It doesn't talk with these ones, so you have to use it in its own proprietary uh, stuff. But I will have that as early as early as this week. I'll have a review for you as well, too. Uh, Rode has been really, really good to us. And that's why we are a Rode family here. All of us in the family uses it. Junior right now is using the Rodecaster Pro as his mixer, using the NT1 as his microphone. Nocturnal Butterfly is going to be using the NT-USB, which we just unboxed today. And, of course, you can see here, like I'm using multiple of them right now. And this is the last one that I'll show you today that I use on, on a fairly regular basis. If I'm doing any things for customers and I'm filming a video commercial or any kind of things like that, I use the NTG3. And this one is a big one. Now, this is inside the Rode Boom. I'm using the uh, – this is an awesome boom pole as well, too. This is a Rode um, Boom Pole Pro, which is all carbon fiber. And I can adjust this thing to probably about 15 feet, and I can I can hold it with one finger as far as the weight. It balances very, very well. But I'm going to pull, and this is inside what's called the Rode Blimp. You've probably seen these in every, all your favorite movies. Uh, any, anything that's being filmed with a movie, they're not wearing microphones uh, on their chest. They're being, it's overhead, usually about 18 inches away from the subject's mouth. I'll pull off the big dead cat here, as they call it. Pull it off. I'm trying not to adjust the microphone too much, and I'll show you the NTG3, which in here is just a f phenomenal microphone. Not a cheap microphone by all means. It's used, it's around a thousand bucks plus Canadian. Uh, but I'll take off the blimp here. We'll unscrew this. Actually, I could have probably done it from the back. Let's do that. Let's take off the back. Put that down here. I will loosen this at the back here, and let me see. Loosen up at the front, and I should be able to slide off the blimp. And this is a microphone you want to obviously take very good care of because you drop these things and break them. They're, they're not, like I say, they're, I think last time I checked, around 1,000 easily Canadian. But uh, you can pick up a whisper from a mile away with these things. So there you go. Pull that off. There is the Rode NTG3 um, condenser shotgun microphone. And I've got various other devices as well, too, where I, just like these, I can actually hold these by hand. I've got some hand pistol grip ones like that as well, too, so I can just hold and, uh, you know, pick up someone speaking. But these things are a beautiful, beautiful microphone. And I've, I've often thought about sometimes so I can get this microphone out of my face when I'm talking. I could use one of these on a stand, um, and it'll pick up robust sound. But I use this a lot on the go, and it also tends to pick up a lot of other – it can pick up, you know – knocking on the desk. It's very, very sensitive, scratching on your pants or, or whatever, that kind of thing, or rustling in your chairs. So there's a lot of background noises it could pick up. So it's I don't want to use it in a case like that. Uh, Brad Moe says, I downloaded the Boston's Pizza pre preset. I got something for the Helix channel with the um, uh, the angle amp and very cool amp for sure. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for d downloading that. I appreciate that. Um, nice, nice, nice. That's one of the... Uh, that's one of the... Um, benefits of uh you know putting up these presets and having people enjoy them for sure so yeah that's the road ntg3 and uh, it's been a it's been a blessing for me as well too now the cool thing check this out you can use that same news shooter kit that i showed you a moment ago all right so pretend the, the blimp is on here right well actually let's not pretend let's put it back together <laughs> someone said that's not a that's not a that's a wolf leg not a rabbit's foot or whatever okay so i'm gonna that was terry i think let's slide this back in Okay, clamp this down, and I'll show you if I want to do a wireless type of a setup outside, and you know, record somebody wirelessly. Okay, slide this back on. This is a little tricky. See if I can get it on there, something like that. Put this on. I'm not going to worry about putting the big windscreen back on, but so your XLR jack is right here. Okay, I could actually put 
the new shooter on there as well too. So let's try that. Try not to block the camera. Just gotta find the spot. Sometimes hooking up an XLR is almost like trying to put in a USB cable. You put it in one way, doesn't fit. Put it in the next way, doesn't fit. It's like how many times you have to flip it before it fits. Okay, so I've got that on now as well. This will supply phantom power to it. So there you go. Now I've got the wireless pack on here. And I'll, I'll try to adjust this to show you. This is pretty pretty awesome how far you can adjust this. Okay, I'm going to adjust it there. I'm going to adjust this one. I'm going to lock that down. Okay, so I'm only at half. I'm only at half of my length of the pole right now. Can you see that? Oops, hit that up there. I can still go more. I can even go more. Watch this. So I can get. I could like reach over like a, a pond or a lake or whatever. Lock it down. Lock it down. Can you see that? Let me see. No, hang on. Bring it into frame here. Look how far back it is. That's like that's got to be 12 feet easily. Try to bring it down. There it is over there, and it's not heavy. And to telescope it, just bring it down. Telescope it, bring it down. And all carbon fiber, it's very, very strong. And we're back to normal. There's your road blimp. Pretty cool. Put that down carefully. And I think that is all the road mics I have to show you today. It's obviously quite a few to go through. Um, Rode, I, I, I love them to death. They've been with us since we were, you know, just in a small, small channel almost three years ago, about three years ago. And um, I, I, I love them to death. There is, it's, the sound here has really progressed because of that company. And uh, I just can't, I can't say enough about it. They're really, really good people. And I, I really encourage you to check them out. You know, if you want to get into filmmaking, here's another thing. Regardless of filmmaking, let's say you're shooting a birthday party for, for your kids or your grandkids or Christmas time, whatever. Um, you know, you want to film these really cool things. You create, you capture a magical moment and then you have to struggle for the audio. So get one of these, like for your camera, just get like one of the VideoMic Pro Pluses, Pro or VideoMic Pro Plus, and you'll be surprised. Like perfect example, I'll wrap up here by talking about Nocturnal Butterflies channel. Um, we did a couple videos for her recently in her greenhouse. She's doing a lot of indoor um, gardening and it's really cool stuff. And we used literally this camera with this microphone. And I was on a tripod. It wasn't handheld. But all the all the voice you heard with her, not the one she just released today, that was shot on an iPad. But the last couple were shot with this camera. And we used this microphone. And she's a good five, six feet away from me. And a lot of times not speaking directly at the camera. She's actually speaking down towards the plants that she's planting. And the voice comes through robust, loud, clear. You don't have to strain yourself. So picture that when it comes to your family videos, birthdays, Christmases, Easter's, or anything you want to celebrate, family functions, barbecues. Um, it brings that audio just as it to the forefront as your video. And a lot of people just forget about that. They hit record and they go. And the, the most important thing is obviously capturing the moment, but the blessing on top of that, capturing the moment and the cool audio. So make sure you don't take one for granted over the other. Make sure they're both uh, focused on. Uh, let me see. Did I see Guitar Hack jumped in? I saw someone saying hello. Hack. Oh, Guitar Hack is here. There he is. Nice to see you, buddy. We are just wrapping up here in a moment. Uh, fortunately, we've had no hiccup with our internet today, um, which I know we will tonight because it's almost like t clockwork now in the evening. It tends to be zapped to nothing. So hopefully our internet provider will have this worked out. I'm working very, very closely with them, and they know uh, our frustrations Our frustrations for sure. Um, <laughs> Dale Palmer says, I could use that to clean out my gutter. Just kidding. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it's long enough, isn't it? For sure. Um and uh, guitar hacks to say everybody I'm on my iPad so hard to type so it's hard to type so big hello to everyone so that is pretty much it we're looking at 4:13 uh eastern standard time here I'm going to jump off um all going all going planned hopefully you don't have to do any more guest canceling as long as my internet provider gets everything in order this week a big show coming up Friday this coming Friday unfortunately I had to cancel two big guests as it was they are going to come back so um Alex Skolnick was bl very kind to say no problem about my technical issues on Friday. He's coming back. Stevic McKay over in Australia, who was scheduled to be on Helix Hour, uh, a late version last night, had to cancel because of the internet. Um, next Friday night, we've got returning guest, and he does not do interviews very often. And I've heard a lot of a lot of people contacting me after my last interview with him saying, dude, you got this guy on the channel? Way to go. Well, Blue Saracino is coming back on the show. He will be back Friday night. 
And uh, that's it's a pretty cool interview. Like I say, he does not do interviews very much, and when he shows up for an interview, people tend to listen, and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have some great discussion. Uh, last time he was here, one of the funny stories he had told us was uh, spending uh, you know three hours at David Lee Ross' house. Uh, you know, he was going to become David Lee Ross' guitarist, and you know the first he says. Uh, you know, the first hour at David Lee Ross house, uh, mansion, you know, it's like kind of fun to hear all the, you know, the, the jokes and the, the banter. Second hour is kind of running a little, uh, the patients are running thin, you know, and okay, <laughs> funny, funny, funny. And after the third hour, he felt like he was a hostage at David Lee Ross house. Um, yeah, so it was very funny the way he told the story. It's still on the channel here. Just look up Blue Saraceno on my channel and you'll see it. A phenomenal player. And we'll have him back on Friday, providing that the internet is working. I'm going to do everything to make sure that that happens. So last look over at the, um, oh, Stefan, uh, Stefan is here. Uh, what happened to the stash? It was removed. Uh, I had a, I, I had a mustache claim from YouTube and I had to remove it. So, uh, and I've worked it out with, uh, with YouTube and they're letting me grow up back now. So it'll be back probably by the weekend. Let me see here. Dale Palmer, I have a hard time typing the chat, so I'm using my phone or tablet. It's impossible using the TV. Yeah, if you're typing on a remote control or something like that as well, too. And Dale Palmer saw it. He said he had some cool stories. Um, so lastly, as I say, talking about Nocturnal's channel, um, and I, I, I want to say this because she helps me so, so very, very much with this channel, not only just moderating, but also the support that she gives me. Uh, this is one thing I'm going to benefit from her channel. She's going to do some really cool cooking things very, very soon too. And with some of her magic recipes, a couple with some ribs and some meats and uh, all kinds of cool, like I'm looking forward to these ribs. She makes amazing, amazing ribs. Now, sadly, she can't eat them anymore because she's changed her diet 100%. She doesn't eat meat. But she's going to share with you and all of us how she does these uh, recipes and things like that. So all kinds of great stuff. So I, I greatly encourage you to, if you get a chance, Click on her name right now. Little little dots in the in the live chat. Go over to her channel and hit the subscribe. Turn on the post notifications because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised what you're going to see coming on her channel soon. It's a lot of fun just with her her weekly live shows, but the things that are coming as well too. She'll teach you how to do indoor gardening so you can save a lot of money at the grocery store having your own vegetables and herbs and all that kind of stuff as well too. Save you a lot of money and, and taste a heck of a lot better. Plus some great uh, cooking tips because she is like, I, I compared someone else to being Eddie Van Halen of microphones earlier in the, uh, in the chat. She's like the Eddie Van Halen of cooking, if that makes any sense. So trust me, go check out her channel, subscribe. It would be great. Um, <laughs> mustache claim, uh, hashtag mustache claim. Will Varela, great chat. Eric mustache claim, Bobby Clipper, great roadshow, Eric, uh, Will Varela cooking. And there you go. So listen, I'm going to let everybody go. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Sunday afternoon. I'm going to go help Junior reformat his Mac app there because he is very upset with me that I didn't do it properly, and which I didn't. So I'm going to go do it again, wipe it clean, get him ready to go. Uh, Scott Carter says, looking forward to seeing Alex. We'll get him back on the show for sure. Fortunately, the people I've been working with are very understanding when technology uh, rears its ugly head that it's technology doing just that, and I, there's no way around it. I was very disappointed, as you guys and, and girls knew when I was in the live chat right up until the midnight hour, basically uh, not the midnight hour, but basically a show time. I'm in the live chat talking with you guys, letting you know I'm trying. I'm on the phone with support and uh, I let them know that it's, it was very embarrassing, you know, to have to do this twice. So we'll get it worked out. I have confidence and uh, I, I'm at their mercy because I've got nobody else here. The, the, uh, I'm, we're in a very small town, Ontario. If I switch to anybody else, I'm even taking a step down. So I have to work with these people. And the the blessing is I know their shortcomings and their strengths and everything in between because I used to work for them. Uh, I was cable guy for them. So I know exactly when they're lying to me and when they're not. So we'll get things worked out. And if I have to get up there on the wires again myself, so be it. I'll do it myself. All right, everybody. Looking forward to... All right, we uh, thought I was already sub found out I wasn't, so I just did now. That's from Dale Palmer to Nocturnal Butterfly. Fantastic. I'll appreciate it very much, too. And I wouldn't ask you to subscribe to anybody if I didn't think there was cool content there. I, I won't do that. She's got great content, and she's not paying me to say that. That's for sure. All right, everybody. I'm going to jump out here. Uh, feel free if you're new here. There's a few new faces in the chat uh, talking about subscribing. Be sure to hit that subscription button right now. Subscribe. Turn on post notifications. And I promise this is a cliche I say all the time, but I mean it sincerely. I will work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as I did to get you. And uh, there's no doubt that I will do that. All right. We will see you very, very soon. And until next time, cheers. Hey, you're still here? Eric Jr. here reminding you to check out our full lineup of quality merch. Available right now in the Broadstash Boutique. 
quality products and fast shipping. Visit broadstash.com today. I am now on Patreon. If you enjoy my content and wish to support my channel and what I do, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash TV. Your support assures a continued growth of this channel and a fun community in which to share our love for Van Halen, music gear, and much more. My name is Eric Hansman, Looking Guitar. Video production services provided by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com.